super excited to get out here. It's like my favorite place in the world to hunt. Mule deer is right here. About to happen, right? When you've been driving for several hours. So here we are back in Alberta, and like I said last year, I say it every year, I said I'm never gonna come without Tiffany and the kids again. And here I am coming up here without Tiffany and the kids. But and we planned on coming in September you know, early when we we're up in Montana at our place elk hunting. And still, we still to be planned on coming, but. So once you just get home from a month on the road and kids haven't going wild the kids need to get back on schedule and so next year for sure we're coming here first before we go to montana still super pumped i'm always super excited to come here it's like my favorite spot and people that know me know that mule deer is like my favorite i mean even though you know hunt whitetails and that's been my passion my whole life it's been whitetails i still just love that chess match about mule deer so i'll come and do it again without them but it's not the same, but it's still always fun. You're scoping them out already. <laughs> Figured you better before you're out of light, so. Yeah. You know. The one with the double stickers. Mm hmm He's sitting over here. He looked good in the, the, the video you sent, but I don't know if he's how old that deer is, though. The other two, the one with the inline, he's living here, and the four points living here. We we'll just have fun. I know it. Yep, it always is. Yeah. All right, it's day one here in Alberta. It's beautiful temperature-wise, but it's supposed to start raining and snowing, which could be good. I mean, quiet for stalking, but they may hunker all down too, and you might not you know, be able to find them as easy. But either way, I'm super excited to get out here. It's like my favorite place in the world to hunt. Mule deer is right here. One on his four as well. Well, he had good front forks. Yeah, this one does too. The back forks were good too with those inlines on them. Yeah, he just is on chasing those does. They're coming back up on the skyline now. I think that's their boy with the kickers off the sides. All right, it's our first day in Alberta. We've been out looking at 50 different bucks, and one of them that I had my mind on. I actually sent a text to Tiffany and John, and this is the one that they voted that they think we should go after. He's just on the other side of this hill, and the only problem is like we got an east wind going right at him, kind of this way, and there's actually a doe on the bottom side of him and the top side of him. And I think when we get down here to get up to him, our wind is going to hit that doe. So I'm not sure if it's going to work or not, but we'll get up there and see what we can do.
wasn't a great spot right here. I don't know why. 30 does come running, they come running right to us. And they just ran across in front of them, brought them out over there. I don't know, after looking at them closer, I don't know, I think maybe I'd like to go look at different ones too. I mean, he's a great buck, but I, you know, he's not. Get closer to him, see if he looked bigger when we got closer. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Too many choices for me. If there's just one deer out here, it would be good. Hmm. Yeah, a little different today. All right, well, we just pulled in. The other side of the ranch takes about a half hour to get all the way over here. And this is actually the side that I've shot all three of the bucks that I've killed were on this side. There's so many over on that other side. You, you know, I'm surprised that I haven't shot one over there, but you know, there's still plenty of good ones over there that we would shoot, but we thought we'd come over here and at least take a look at these and see if we can find some of these. Um, you know, there's a couple of big ones over here too. We're just pulling out of this side. We went and saw the big three by four that you know we wanted to look at, and I still tough decision because it's such a big frame and everything. But I still like the one from yesterday with the kickers out the side, just a little you know more interesting to me. I just kind of like that one better. So we're just gonna grab our lunch and just head back over to the other side and try to find him again. Easily shot him at 70. And I just, I don't know when I look at him, he just, he just looks too young and too small to me. I, just, I know it's probably the best deer that's on the ranch right now, but I just can't, I just can't do it. I just, I just cannot force myself to, to shoot one that's young and, and you know, could be better someday. I just can't do it. You know, from far off and stuff, you think he looks pretty good and stuff, but then you get close like this, just. 
doesn't look like he's got any spread. He just doesn't, just looks like he's got a baby face. And just seeing that other big typical just walk him off like that. There's just, there's no way I'm going to shoot that deer. <clears throat> Sorry, Tiff. <clears throat> I know we could have been going home tomorrow, but I just can't do it. Well, it's our third day here in Alberta and it's way different weather than yesterday. <laughs> it's like snowing, but the only difference is that it's like 10 degrees instead of 20 degrees, so it's even colder. We were gonna go down the bottom and look up these draws, but you just can't see far enough to get a good look there. So we're just gonna have to go each draw by draw and you probably bump them up and normally they just go to the next one and, and bed up. So anyway, we kind of eliminated a bunch of deer, took them off the hit list and you know, so we're kind of dwindling it down to really one of the, one of the two big three by fours. You know, they've once good genetics and stuff. I just looked at them and looked at them and just, I just think those are the ones we should leave for next year. You know, if we want a big, if you want a 220 or something, eventually you can't shoot them, you know, when they're 180s or 190s. So well, let's wait till they get out of sight. it easy on us <laughs> just sitting there 55 yards or 60 yards I thought maybe they'd just walk down this way where we could get out and go around this way and just cut them off I mean they weren't spooked at all but we'll just I mean we can follow the tracks now yeah no, so I don't think they're real spooked so but that's when we kind of decided on after looking at them yesterday and these other ones we think we should just leave them alone and just leave them for another year and this one, since it's only a three by four, it is kind of a, more of a management deer, but he's giant. He's got the giant frame and everything. He's gonna stay low down here. Blow the sailor go around and see what we can see here.
sauce. And I'm at 84 and get the full draw and he's just courting a little bit and I'm just waiting for him to turn. He just got one step and I just the other one was so calm, just walking. I thought he'd just take one step, but he just ran back to 104 and then I was like, oh, I gotta let down, so we'll just get back on him again. I don't think they're real spooked, but we'll see what happens. Dang it. I found. Good. You will not believe what I found. He was in the, that low spot that's over here. Uh huh. And he went across and he jumped over that fence. It's right, that gate. Uh huh. Up on the hill, and he went down into that coulee. Nice. He's he's as big as Whitehorn or bigger. His frame. Uh, and his back works like this. <laughs> well, it's a heck of a way to start day four. And we got on this wide one here. He's at 112, that was too far. And he's walked back over with all the does over there. So basically a blessing in disguise because when Ken dropped us off and went up to the top just to watch, he found another buck over here. <clears throat> just giant deep forks, big frame and everything else. Some of that kind of deer that we we're looking for originally. You gotta kind of get small one. The small one's looking at the big one. God, it's a big. His body's huge. The rack is huge. He's got everything. Right here, over the edge, somewhere. Oh, there he is, there he is. I can see his horns. I can see the top of the horns right there. About 75 yards back, I could see his antler tips. I've just been crawling up here on my knees. Perfect when I was looking at him over there. Didn't look like we were going to get to him, but this is actually a better setup than I thought. That's 56 yards.
Oh my god. I can't believe it. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh. I cannot believe it. Oh god, I was so cold. I was like, there's no way I'm gonna be able to draw this thing back. Oh my god. <laughs> Can you believe it? Oh my gosh. I can't believe it worked. I can't believe it happened. That's what you like to see right there. Now the blood just spraying all through here. Look at that thing. The one we saw yesterday, way on the other side, we thought was this buck. We thought, uh, you know, cause it, but I could just see like one little sticker. And I was like, no, nah, that deer's not big enough and not old enough. Um, you know, so we, we just left him go. But this is that the, the deer that he had in velvet with the two stickers off there. And I remember I said he was like, he's got such a deep fork on this side and these two kickers. And this one, he's got a little bit of it broken off. So he's just not quite as big on this side. But, <laughs> look at that. Golly, look at that thing. And the body's on here. Oh my gosh. Look at that. <sighs> Unreal. Thanks again for watching everybody and thanks for coming to our YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed, go hit that subscribe button right now because there's plenty more deer hunting coming this year.